What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Joey here from the So Wizard Podcast coming at you once again with some more comic book reviews for you, the viewers out there in YouTube land. But before we get started, of course, make sure that you're liking, make sure you're subscribing, and make sure you're hitting the bell down below so you get the notifications every time we got new content popping up on the YouTube channel. There's hours of free exclusive content here for you, interviews, unboxings, more comic reviews, all sorts of crazy stuff. So subscribe, check it out, see what you like. Of course, I am a lapsed comic book fan reviewing comics that I've purchased out of pocket, letting you know what I think, seeing if they want to make me come back for another issue and where we're at with new release comic books every single week hitting these up for you. So our past weekend, we had free comic book day. We headed up to our local shop, Comics mm, Apostrophe More in East Hampton, Massachusetts, picked up some books and free comic book day stuff. Of course, you know, grab some stuff. I got the Power Rangers book. Looks pretty cool from uh, Boom. Have not read it yet. Sorry. Um, I got X-Men, Avengers, Eternals, Judgment Day. From Marvel, haven't read that yet either. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be more than just like the Eternals movie, which was really boring. Uh, maybe the X-Men and the Avengers show up to fight and then the Eternals just put their movie on a big screen and everyone falls asleep and they win. Um, so, yeah, that's that might be exciting. Uh, and then I did get Dark Crisis um, Special Edition. So this is like a preview of Dark Crisis. Uh, we liked Justice League 75 last week, so um, this was pretty cool. I did get a chance to flip through it and read it. Some some short stories, a short story kind of setting up a little bit with the Flash, uh, Jim Chung art, Joshua Williamson writing. Uh, really liked what was in it. Um, History of the Multiverse, a couple other things, and a preview of Dark Crisis number one. So this was kind of cool for free. I mean, it was free. It's not like uh, we paid money for it. So for what it was pretty cool i'm still excited for dark crisis so we'll see how that shakes out as the midi series goes along i don't know if i'm gonna buy all the tie-ins but I'll at least try the main series so yeah i love jim chung art so i mean you can't go wrong there you know so those were the three free books i got but what about the books that we paid for the books we're gonna review this week all right man we'll jump into it our first one is spider-man 2099 exodius um, another, uh, 2099 event with Spider-Man. This one guest stars Ghost Rider 2099. Uh, I don't know if you remember, God, I want to say it was mid nineties. It was the mid nineties. Uh, Marvel launched the 2099 line, which was a new line of books. It had Spider-Man, Doom, Punisher, and Ravage 2099. Uh, they were all interconnected books. Spider-Man was obviously the flagship one. It was the best one. Peter David and Rick Lenardi um, writing that. And it was great. It had a great run, great book. Um, they brought it back here and there over the years. And, uh, you know, his iconic costume. I've always, always a big fan. That first uh, initial run, that Peter David, Rick Lenardi run, that's great stuff, man. I think it's on Marvel Unlimited. It should all be on Marvel Unlimited. So, throw some money down and check it out. Or maybe you want to even hunt it down through back issues. I think a couple of them have kind of gone up in price with the ridiculous uh, market explosion and back issues and like trading cards and stuff in the last few years, but uh, definitely worth it for a read. So I really enjoyed it. I haven't really checked out any of the reboots that came out after that. I haven't been reading books for a long time. And I know he was in uh, into the spider verse in the after credit scene. Uh, Oscar Isaac as the voice. So it's allegedly coming back in the new one. So this is the first part of what's going to be a like mini series. Um, there's a Exodius book. And then I think there's another weirdly named one after in like a six issue mini series in between. So you've got that <laughs> age of apocalypse vibe. They just want to make you buy more stuff. Obviously um, 499 Marvel book um, cover, not as bad as some of them have been. So uh, still, I'd, I'd like to see a cardstock cover or a higher quality cover. How can, pardon me, this book, uh, which I just used as kind of a haha -ha in the, like taking pictures of yourself for your YouTube things where you're like, <gasps> and like holding something up. Uh, how can this, which is from 
1979. So I was two years old when this came out. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm hip, I'm cool, I'm wow, I'm now, but I was two years old when this came out. Um, and it's the the cover is a better quality, and the paper. Oh, that's my old comics, man. The paper is a better quality too. Um, and this is this has not been in a bag and board. It's been hanging out. I've had this forever. And this is better quality than this. This just came out this past week. This is like the future. Not just because it's 2099, but it's the wave of the future. How is this better quality paper than this? I don't know. Certainly makes you feel like you're wasting your money. And it's a Marvel thing because the DC and the image books we bought have all been fine. So I don't know what they are doing over there. But tell Mickey Mouse to open up his pockets a little bit and get you some better paper quality because this is ridiculous. Um, obviously, this isn't the worst one, but it's still ridiculous. Uh, the inside paper, though, is pretty good. So for a, a recent release Marvel book, it's not 100% embarrassing, but it's still pretty bad. Um, come on, guys. Come on. Especially with the prices you're asking us to pay for these books. Come on. So. Steve Orlando writing, Paul Fry art, uh, really cool cover by Lineal Francis Yu. I was, like I said, loved 2099 back in the day. Um, this really is good. <laughs> I, I know, right? A Marvel book and we're, we're, we're all over it, but this is good, man. Uh, art looks good. Uh, looks like it just, you just jump right back into the old series. Uh, it didn't, doesn't feel like I missed anything. There's a lot going on here. Um, they got a lot to set up with this world. And like I said, I have not read any of the 2099 stuff in between. Oh, God, that was before I met my wife, even when that came out. Jesus. Um, in between those old books and now. So I never read any of the stuff that was out a few years ago or before or any of the weird crossovers they had, any of that kind of stuff. So I'm just jumping in with knowledge what I had from. God, I don't want to say it, man. I don't want to say it like 28 years ago, 29 years ago. Um, but it's cool, man. It, it, it is really good. They do a good job. Like Steve Orlando does a really good job of something we've looked at a lot in these videos and they are explaining to you in story, the things you need to know. Um, you get a little bit at the beginning that just sets up what who Spider-Man 99 is 2099 is and, and, you know, a tiny bit. That's all you need to know boom uh jumps in and for the most part like you know it's great because like look look at this you get spider-man and then you get you know he's like oh it's spider-man that's kind of stuff we want to see man everything is explained in story that you need to know um obviously it's not going to give away like secrets or anything uh, there's a big reveal at the end i'm not going to ruin that for you but they do a really good job of that they do a really good job um and it's something we want to see more of throughout these books it's your first time jumping into this. You're, you're able to follow along and the art's good. The art is really good, really dynamic, big widescreen action stuff going on. Ghost Rider shows up. And for the most part, I, I really liked it. I'm not going to give away the ending or too much about the story because obviously this is setting up a bunch of stuff. But for me, man, this was a good book. I enjoyed this. Uh, am I going to buy more? That's a good question. Uh, for $4.99, Again, a big ask with these prices, but I enjoyed what I had here. So I'm not at that level where I was with World's Finest and Justice League, where I'm like, all right, I'm definitely buying the next like six issues. I'm all in. Um, but this is definitely something I'm going to maybe buy the next issue and hope it keeps pulling me in at this point. Good art, good story, enjoyed it, sets everything up and explains to you what you need to know. Spider Man 2099. Exodius. I got to keep looking to make sure I get the right word. Exodius. Uh, I'm going to go with a uh, three and a half out of five. Three and a half out of five. I enjoyed it. Obviously, I'm a Spider-Man guy, so maybe there's a little bit more for me to want to like it than uh, your average Joe off the street. But it gave me that old school 2099 vibe. I enjoyed it. Three and a half out of five throw it on the floor on to the next one all right so you know one of the things we are looking for with these books is am i going to buy the next issue and a lot of these things that we've read the answer is no uh, a couple of them the answer has been yes but for most of them so far the answer has been no and that's kind of sad flashpoint beyond number zero i reviewed a week or so ago on the show and 
I wasn't a big fan. I was not a big fan, but you know what? We were at the shop. It was free comic book day. I'm trying to get, you know, one Marvel, one DC, or maybe one indie book that like jumps out to me. And I'm just looking at the DC rack and I'm looking and I'm looking and nothing was jumping out really at me. I didn't want to do it, but I said, screw it, man. I'll just get, I'll get it. Flashpoint beyond number one. <laughs> And I'll get it. I'll give it a try. You know, maybe it was just that weird extra issue. I don't know, but four ninety nine at least. So unlike the first one that I think was five ninety nine, uh, this went down a dollar in price. Um, you know, a uh, good cover. I like the cover quality better than Marvel and paper quality. DC has been good with the paper quality, so I, I'm enjoying the paper quality. You know, we've got three writers on this three writers so jeff johns jeremy adams and tim sheridan there's art by oh boy um zermancio and miguel janin the variant cover was also done by zermancio and this cover was by mitch gerads so there you go um five people worked on this one so uh, Flashpoint Beyond number one uh, picks up pretty much where the last one left off that we read, um, which was basically a six dollar prequel, a waste of money. This one, um, you know, more stuff happens. Uh, everything is still explained, though, in the book. Uh, but what you need, you get your your opening page. It's got a little blurb about what you need to know. And then it just kind of goes from there, letting you know what's happening. Uh, and kind of explaining in story, not as good a job as the 2099 book does for setting the storyline up without really making you feel like you need to run to Wikipedia and check it out. But they do a decent enough job. And the, the thing that kind of sucks about that is it makes you feel like, well, then why did I buy that prequel book? Like, what was the point of that prequel book? If, if you're just going to re-explain everything in this one to me, so... That, that that hurts a little bit when you spent like six bucks on that one. But for the most part, it's OK. I mean, it's really the same thing again. You know, Batman is Thomas Wayne Batman. It's an alternate universe, Thomas Wayne Batman. And, you know, something happened. I don't, again, I, I try not to spoil this stuff for you, but something happened. And the Flashpoint universe exists again. Uh, hijinks ensue. And he is interacting with Aquaman and Wonder Woman and trying to you know, change things. We end up uh, back in the main DCU for some shenanigans as well at the end of the book. I'm again, I'm not going to spoil what the hook is so far, but it wasn't enough for me. It really wasn't enough for me. I'm a big uh, events type of guy, like Crisis, one of my favorite books of all time, probably my favorite event of all time. And he, that's coming from a Marvel guy. So uh, I, I like these big DC events. I think Infinite Crisis was good. Uh, Final Crisis was terrible, except uh, Legion of Three Worlds was awesome. But there's just, uh, you know, they do good when they do good events. It just feels like this is kind of a weird thing off to the side when we've got when we've got Dark Crisis uh, starting right around the same time. So is this more self-contained? Is this the big event we should be worrying about? I'm not really sure. Uh, when it comes down between the two of them, I'm going to err on the side of Dark Crisis. Uh, much better art, much better story, bigger picture. This, it, There's a lot of talking in this and a lot of walking around. I still haven't felt the oomph to keep going with Flashpoint Beyond. And I, I honestly just picked it up because there wasn't much else to grab this week. And I just think uh, this is it. I'm done with Flashpoint Beyond. Maybe I'll read a uh, synopsis six months from now or if it gets delayed like eight months from now when it's done and we'll see where we are from there i just there was just not much here man i just wasn't really feeling it big jeff johns guy i talked about that before i love the guy does a lot of great work his jsa his green lantern you know but this ain't it bro this ain't it just not feeling it at all no pull for me no oomph. don't care about what happens in the next issue so I hate to say it, but one and a half out of five for Flashpoint Beyond number one. Just just not feeling it. Just not feeling it. Sorry, bro. Sorry. But we had a good free comic book day. Spider-Man 2099 Exodius. Pretty good. Uh, definitely going to move on and check out the rest of that storyline, depending on how it, it shakes out. Uh, Flashpoint Beyond, I think we're all set with that one. We're good. And that's it. Those are the books that we read this week. We checked out. 
as always, thank you so much for checking it out. Let me know in the comments if you agree, you disagree, or if there are any books you think I should be checking out coming up or even something to grab from the back issue bin from a year, a couple months ago. Just let me know. And that's going to do it. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you know when all our So Wizard videos are hitting you on YouTube. Check out the weekly podcast. We're reviewing movies all the time. So if you like movies and TV shows of a nerdy variety, we got that for you too. And as always, I'll see you next week with more comic reviews. Good journey.